Do you think that whole precinct of Government House, not just mm. the house itself, but the whole precinct, should be the governor's domain in which the governor rules, not Definitely. the government of the day? Definitely. I, I agree with that. Because I think it's so important in the current political atmosphere for governors to know they have that independence and not to fear interference by any government, whether it's a coalition government or a Labor government. I think that's very important in the current environment because there may be needs for governors to exercise their powers. I'm also troubled that there's often rumours around, which it's hard to prove, that any person now appointed by a Labor government to the Governor-General or Governor has to give some sort of a secret assurance they won't use the reserve powers. If that could be proved, then that would be, to me, an attack on our Constitution. Yes, that would be extraordinary if mm. that were the case. But there are these secret agreements. I know that Labor members who come into Parliament have to sign secret agreements uh, to be allowed to be a candidate, which to me is the opposite to their elected position. They're elected by the people, and there should not be any secret agreement that I will always obey without question the Labor Party and not vote against the Labor Party and so on. They should be allowed to exercise their conscience. I have doubts about the constitutionality of the caucus pledge. Mm. The British Labour Party doesn't have it. Mm. And hence you saw, for example, when Mr Blair was in power and uh, he was making decisions about Iraq, he, mm. had, uh, he had to rely on Tory votes yes. to retain the support of the House of Commons on mm. some important issues. I think it's very important that, that the discretion of an MP be preserved. I think you're making a very good point mm. there. Mm. You're having a, you're hosting mm. uh, a public meeting on this on the 7th of March, are you not, at Parliament House? Yes, yes, and I'm very happy to do that, and in you're cooperation having, with the Australians for Constitutional Monarchy. And you're having a, a well-known broadcaster speaking there. Yes, that will be Alan Jones. Alan Jones yes. is speaking, and he's, he was a, a very mm. strong person in, this, in, the, in what happened many years ago. Do you find it interesting that the only major demonstration that the monarchists ever called was so well attended that when the Republican movement has called for demonstrations of public mm. interest, as they did a week before the referendum, mm. as they did over the mate for the head of state uh, fiasco, yes. that very few people actually turned up. Does that tell us something about the interest <laughs> that the Australian people have in turning Australia into a politician's republic? Yes. Well, it's always been an elite, and that the failure, you could say, to mobilise the grassroots proves that. It's an elite uh, run by the ABC and the, and the Greens and other people with a vested interest. Good. Well, thank you very much for your time, Mr. Good. Martin. Very uh, thank generous. you, David, and God bless you and the important role you have in leading our Australians for Constitutional Monarchy organisation. It's a, a vital organisation in this uh, political climate which we now live. Thank you.